Welcome to our tutorial on basic editing. In this lesson, we're going to be covering some of the common ways to manipulate your audio and how to navigate around the Cubase interface. If you forgot to name your tracks appropriately, you can do this now. This black strip at the top of the window is called the Event Info Line. When you've got an event selected, this line displays a lot of information about the event. Here we see the file name, a description, the start and end points, the length of the event, etc. You can rename the audio file itself by clicking on the name in the event info line and typing a new name. Let's do that. And press enter. This changes the audio file's name right on your hard drive. Let me drag in the Windows Explorer window where the file's located. Here you can see we've renamed it right on our hard drive. You can enter a description if you like also, currently, and by default it'll display the file name. I'm going to enter the bank name of the sound I used. And see how it displays right on the track for easy viewing? You'll notice what I just did to zoom in. I clicked on the ruler and dragged my mouse downward to zoom in. You drag upward to zoom out. This is the fastest way to get to a new custom resume position in Cubase and is one of the features I like about Cubase. Right now, the ruler displays the timeline in minutes and seconds, and that means that the zero cursor position is zero minutes, zero seconds, etc. Let's click Return to Zero. Let's take a look at the secondary time display on the transport panel. Here we see the display at zero, zero all the way through. Now I've just dropped my cursor at approximately 10 seconds. You saw previously how we can increase or decrease the height of our tracks. Just select the track you want to change, then position the mouse over the lower or upper edge. You can drag up or down when the double-sided arrow appears, and you can change more than one track at a time by control selecting if they're non-sequential, or by shift selecting if they are sequential. This lets you quickly adjust all your tracks to the same size if you like. And let's try that. Let's say I want the ruler to show my recording in another measurement mode. I'd right click on the lower half of the ruler and that's a control click on your Mac. And then I'm going to select bars and beats. Let's zoom in a little bit. As you see here, each bar is divided into four beats. One, two, three and four and each beat is further subdivided into four divisions. As you see, I started singing and playing on the first beat of bar two. On the transport panel, these numbers represent the primary time display, currently bars and beats. Currently, we're at bar one, beat four, and almost at the end of beat four. I can enter a value here with a double click and then press enter to go to that place in my timeline. Let's enter four, press enter. And as you see, we are taken to bar four. There's a set of smaller numbers on the transport panel. This is called the secondary time display. In our case, it's set in hours, minutes, seconds, and then frames here. If your primary time display is in bars and beats, then your secondary display will always switch to time and vice versa. If we've got minutes and seconds displayed on the left here as the primary time display, then on the right we're going to see the same value in bars and beats. I can also navigate to a place by entering a value on the secondary time display. Just left click in one of the fields and enter your value, let's say in the seconds position. I'll enter 15 seconds. And the cursor moves to its new possession. You can also enter a value by scrolling with the mouse wheel. Just left click and then scroll. And the cursor will move to your new position. To get to the end of a project quickly, click the project end button. And this will take you right to the end unless you've got markers set up, and we're going to learn more about using markers later on. 
If you want Cubase to scroll along with your work in real time during your playback and your recording, you need to toggle on what's called the Auto Scroll button. It's active when it's blue. If you want to make edits in one part of the recording, but listening to another part of the recording, you'll need to toggle Auto Scroll off. Let's play our work. Auto Scroll is currently toggled on. Now, as you see, there aren't any events here, but the cursor continues moving along with the ruler, and our project window follows it. Let's try the same playback with the auto scroll option toggled off. Just return to the beginning here. Play again. This time, our cursor continues moving to the right down the timeline, but the window doesn't accommodate it. We remain with our current zoom position and project window position. These icons are the main editing tools. This is the object selection tool. You use this to select an event. For example, if you want to delete something. Select it, press delete on your keyboard. And let's undo that by going to the edit menu and selecting undo delete. You can also do that with a control or command Z. We also use the Object Selection tool to resize events. Let's select an event that we want to resize. I've got some extraneous matter at the beginning of this voice track here I'd like to get rid of. I'll hover the mouse over the square at the bottom left corner and then drag inward. I've just shortened the event. We can also lengthen it again and restore that original stuff. Remember, we can't extend past the original audio recording. Let me just go to the end of my work. Let's just get back to the end of that event. I'm not able to extend this event, even though I can shorten it. I had some additional speech at the end of this track. Let's just clean that up by shortening the event. These edits don't actually change the file that we recorded. We can always restore that raw recording again for a new mix if we need to. This is a principle of non-destructive editing. The edits that we make in the project file don't delete or change those audio files on our drive. Again, to resize an event, hover your mouse over the square at the bottom right or left until it becomes a double-sided arrow, and then drag in or out as you need to. You may have noticed the triangle in the upper right corner of the event. If I hover my mouse over it, I get the double-sided arrow again, and I'm able to create a fade out this way. Once you see the double-sided arrow, you can drag in towards the left to create a fade out. You see faint blue guidelines that indicate the fade area. The image of the audio wave also adjusts, indicating the fade out. We'll be learning about how to create custom fades later in this course. For now, I'll just let you know that if you double click on the faded portion, the fade in or out dialog window opens and you can adjust fade parameters from here. Apply and OK to accept your changes. And let's restore the project window by maximizing here. And let's zoom out a little bit more. We can also use the Object Selection tool to move events. Just select an event and then drag it to where you want to position it. You can also drag an event this way to another track, either to a new track or to an existing track. Cubase automatically creates a new track for us to accommodate this event's new location. Don't forget to rename any new tracks you create this way with a name that's easy to identify. Let's undo each of those moves with a Ctrl or Command Z until we're back to the original sequencing of our events. If you want to copy an event, select it with the Object Selection tool, and then select Copy from the Edit menu. Position the cursor where you want the copy to go, and be sure that you've selected the right track for pasting. Now choose Paste from the Edit menu. If you pasted to the wrong track by mistake, no problem, just drag the event to the correct destination. You can copy and paste more than one event at a time this way. Let's shift select another event. Edit and Copy. New Position. Edit and Paste. And let's undo that with a Ctrl or Command Z. Return to zero. Let's activate Auto Scroll, and I'm taken to where the cursor is. The shortcut for copying is to drag while holding down the Alt key on your PC or the Option key on your Mac. 